en el lado azul, el hombre que eliminó a Soaz, QTP. And as a mid laner, he's already dominated on Katarina, LeBlanc, and Syndra. Somebody take him off of these champions. It's Maple! All right, gentlemen, let's do this. I uh, almost thought we were going to see, uh, you know, the village people, YMCA there for a second. <laughs> I, I was starting to dance a little bit, but then uh, I realized it was just his name. It was just, yeah, it's just yep. QTV right there. Uh, Dash may have to go full on charades later on because <laughs> he is seemingly slowly, like, getting affected in the voice department. Yeah, I mean, everyone has their limits. He's still got a full extra day. You know, maybe you could get up there, Crepo. <laughs> Your time to shine. What do you think? No, we, we established this day one with the fish show. Uh, people with girly voices stand here. <laughs> <laughs> people with manly voices do the stage. Anyways, uh, let's focus on the game again. Enough about us. QTV versus Maple. QTV took down Soaz. Yeah, he did. And, and that was one where I think Soaz would like to have it back. Uh, Soaz definitely was another guy who was prepping a lot for the 1v1s yep. and really wanted to do well. And he made some mistakes. And, and QTV was there to quickly capitalize on it. Uh, definitely did really well for himself. And, and Maple on the other side has been shining throughout this tournament. Even in losses, he's been looking great. So he's just so fun to watch. Maple is probably one of the kind of consistent value delivering players like whenever you see maple in any mode game or tournament you can there is a quality bar that he will bring to the table yeah yeah he's fantastic this guy can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the very best the likes of faker and, and come out looking very good um, both in his last lck as well as his wins you know against na he looked incredible um, so he can do it against the best and the worst there you go there you go crepo I, I got nothing to say to you I, <laughs> I'm just going to accept that and we're going to move on. <laughs> God damn it! Sometimes <laughs> you have to laugh. Yeah, you got to take a better laugh than it is to cry. Yep, definitely so. I'll take that in mind. <laughs> All right. We will not be seeing many more Kaelins, I feel, as ill. No. Kaelin is, is, is so good in this mode, I think. And it's it's something that uh, especially works very well with the kind of more passive mode. And it's it's like, especially if you think that your opponent is, is willing to play the 100 CS type games. Yeah. Caitlyn, Caitlyn with a resolve spec, uh, like you were pointing out earlier. It's the lock Syndra. Insta-lock, though. Again, guys, here at Riot Games, we don't want you to cheat, but if there happens to be a giant monitor right next to you, maybe just uh, take a look. See, although this pick looks uh, looks okay, although for Syndra, it's, it's what he played last time, is it not? I, I believe he actually did play Syndra. I want to say he played against Bengi, unless I'm confusing that, because it was a Syndra versus TK matchup. Mm -hmm. and I think it was Maple yeah, it was playing pretty close. against Bengi. And Bengi made some pretty big mistakes in that one. He actually was looking like he was doing pretty well, kind of trying to trade his HP for mana. And he ended up all in inning. Oh my god, it's okay. good. Ramus. Okay, Urgot. Interesting. Urgot's fun to watch, because if there's a champion with a really high all-in, Maybe we finally found the answer to Syndra. All these Reddit threads about like, man, she missed all her spells, threw a bunch of spears in my face and I'm dying. Well, were you playing Argo? Were you? Because you're passive and your shield can protect you. Yep. And then you're going to have that one guy who's like, I have 700 Urgot games to lose to Syndra. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Maybe it's because you're bad. Maybe, right. Krepo. Let's see. This does feel like a match where Syndra just has such an easy push. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that if summoner spells aren't changed, it's pretty interesting because we did see the fact that Maple was not running Exhaust, which you might be like, well, why? Exhaust is so powerful in these 1v1s. It's because he's not expecting to get into melee range, right? Mm -hmm. He's trying to use his range to kind of poke out his opponent to keep throwing those spells from a longer range than the Urgot can get into. He never wants to actually be in, in range of Exhausting, right? He wants to stay very far back unless he's trying to go uh, for that all-in kill and use the Ignite. Yeah, that's definitely what Urgot wants to do. He wants to get up close to the Syndra, hopefully dodge some spells somehow, you know, get that um, reduced damage from the ultimate because I've to my knowledge, just going to make sure I'm not messing it up here, it stays on you two seconds after the ultimate, right? Yeah, I do believe so. I mean, I don't know the exact timing, but it's a flat damage drop. Yeah. It is a buff. With a lingering effect. Through. Exactly. So that's kind of the... If we're looking at if it ever gets to level 6, QTV wants to swap before or during the ulti. Ideally, you want to swap mid-ulti animation, so you soak the ulti, and then have a trade right after on the second round of cooldowns from the Syndra that you also get double reduced damage, one from your passive and one from the R lingering effect. Yeah. But that is if it gets to level 6, because it could be just be an early push fiesta for Maple. It certainly could. And the thing is, for QTV, if Cinder gets 6, you have to either ult or exhaust that ultimate, or you're probably just going to take 
simply way too much damage. And that's mm -hmm. how Bengi ended up losing this matchup, getting a full unexhausted ultimate on him. And it's just too much to take. He got chunk so low. And, and Maple's going to try to stay out of range, going to try to poke him out, hit those Qs, hit those Es, and, and look for the trades on that. And definitely initiate the ulti out of exhaust range, just exactly. like we were talking about earlier. You do not want to get that ulti exhaust. And for QTV, it's paramount that he does exactly that. Again, just like any 1v1 starts, people hit the first creep just a ton. Want to get that down. Focus on single creeps, single melees. QTV is kind of already looking to yield the push just a bit. Maple can get those range creeps down. Now, Maple is starting the W, actually. Oh, that's so he, he took the W. He wants to just be able to kind of harass this out, uh, try to get some early poke on the QTV. And it does have very good range. So it, it is interesting to see that he is electing to go for that. Um, QTV, I mean, level one, you're not really looking to do too, too much. You are much more hoping for that level two. You hit your E, and then you start to get really, really good trades. Yeah, QTV is running um, 0, 18, 12. So okay. he's doing a Thunderlord's Urgot with then a Resolve side spec. And the full mana regen there. So he has all the HP regen talents and the mana regen talents, mm -hmm. which I really do like quite a lot. Uh, and it may allow him to kind of skip something like a tier that Impact went into, right? You can go for something like a Hex Drinker instead. You can go for more defensive options because you may not need to itemize as heavily into the mana regen. And that can help you to survive uh, an all-in that may come from Maple. And if you can live through that ultimate, if it gets there, obviously, uh, and kind of get up in his face and really start to kind of get that fight close and personal, you could win. Yeah, so Maple right now, honestly, wants to get the most out of his spells. That's why he's lost sitting purely with auto attacks. Uh, doing a decent job so far, not dropping too much. Yes, still trailing a few ahead. That's a good connect here on level three, obviously. Sidesteps to counter damage. That's a really beautiful trade. Oh, he's looking. Notice how he's not getting any minion aggro. Yep. He did not weave in an auto attack there. He can walk in between the range creeps and pop Q because Q is a spell and against spells do not draw minion aggro here. He also sidestepped the counter W from Maple, so that was in that microcosm perfect play by QDV. Yeah, it was very well done. Maple though has the push advantage as you said he would. And he's gonna get that early base and and likely pick up a Dorans or something. So he goes double Dorans, he gets the Fairy Charm. So it's all Mander Regen. He wants to stay out of range of his opponent, spam out these spells, and try to just win it out, probably either Wave Control or just an all-in from out of range of his opponent. And QTV is so behind in the push, so he is going to be late to back. Ooh, um, but it's very, custom very interested to see. Yeah, I'm very interested to see what he's actually going to be able to buy. Like, does he go defensive here straight off the bat? Or does he go double Dorans into a long sword? Oh, it's here anyway. Wow, I'm actually shocked. Yeah, he just specs really deep wow. into... Um, and Fairy Charm? I actually think this doesn't really make super a lot of sense when you have uh, full mana regen masteries because I don't think you're actually going to oom. Oof. I mean, Urgot ooms very quickly. Yeah. Soft freeze here. Uh, before we, we kind of go back into the build here, we saw a couple of minions denied, but obviously you don't want to let the Urgot arrive on a full push, so you want to strike this balance where you deny one or two creeps by pushing the wave into position Oop. and then still get the push back. Yeah, well, Q2B, we'll see if... It's certainly not going to have any mana problems now. Fairy Charm, Tier, uh, surprise, man. Manager Radio Gem Masteries. Look at that damage, though. Even without uh, really any AD, that is a massive amount of damage that he's able to do. And every time you connect. Beautiful E placement as well. That was at the edge. So just like this guy, like if you miss your E on Urgot, you get counter so hard because you're utterly useless. So this is one spell you need to connect because it sets everything up. Yeah, the cooldown is pretty long here early on as well. And going to connect another. And if you're wondering why he's using the shield when he does connect that, yeah. it adds the slow. So it yeah. does put the slow onto that. But if we bring Hydro Critical, he would not be in range for a second hit after the slow. So technically that was a wasted shield, which got, got him poked right after. So we're really judging like these micro traits here. But it may, it can always mean the difference in the end. Yeah, it certainly can. A lot of these matches have come down to very, very small differences. And QTV able to absorb a lot of that damage. And you know, if this does go further, will he pick up the Null Magic Mantle? Will he build more defensively? I mean, um, sure. He has, he has a lot of mana regen already. And he could just kind of turn himself into, into a semi-tank. Yeah, and the, the thing that we kind of overlooked with this heavy kind of reliance on mana is that he can use more spells on the wave now. That's fair. And then leverage the push. We see a level 6 on Maple right now. QTV hit him as well. He has control because he has his own control from E. I like this from Maple. Yeah, that was really nicely done. He lands the stun, pushes him back, able to take away uh, that health relic, but does get a trade on the way out. Fox of Thunder. Look like. QTV has to be careful because a lot of Ergo players, they get so sucked in and they walk in range to do another Q. Um, they forget that E is Dot. And Dot's draw tower aggro. Uh, and so you can really like mess yourself up right there. Maple is slowly learning this matchup, the cadence and kind of the timing where QTV wants to use that. Uh, 
kind of poison charge. So he's been dodging a lot more lately. Yeah, he has been doing very well with that. And the, the CS is very close. It's only going to be one uh, separating these two players as they do base once again here. Maple actually uh, taking a pretty safe base there, but QTV uh, will go back. And now he's building towards the Hex Shrinker. Yeah, complete reset in the middle. I like to know Magic Mantle. You do not want to get a position where you make a mistake. You know, it's kind of a safety net. Maybe you can survive it with perfect exhaust, with perfect ultimate, but you don't always have the guarantee that you will get into that position. And, and Maple as well, picking up the cloth armor, right? That's at least something. The E8 from Urgot, I believe, does shred some armor as mm -hmm. well. So uh, there is the armor shred there, and, and you're not going to have a lot as well already. So just look at the damage. It, it does get quite high if you can connect a couple of those Prey Seekers. Like, that is the Thunderlord proc right there. The double Q plus the E, the first instance of that E counts. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can proc it pretty easily. And obviously, no need for Warlord sustain because he's so zone reliant, keeping Maple at bay here. It is slowly turning into a CS match, so we gotta keep tracking that. There's a two CS lead here in the end if everything plays out well. And what do you think? Should QTV have bunched the minions before he based, you know, to try to kind of get that pushing against him to deny a couple of minions? So is that worth the time that he would delay his base? Because Maple had left first, he had the option of doing that. I'm just not sure, you know, I don't think he knew Maple was basing. Uh, that's under the assumption. I think you can work from that under the assumption of perfect information. But you never know if this guy's in the brush waiting to push out, anyways. Because if you if you stack a wave and the guy fast pushes you, then you, you just got yeah, you just got played. Baited and outsmarted. Yeah. <laughs> Good old beta uh, smart. Uh, good poke here. Basically, predictive movement. You know, as you know, somebody has to walk up for the final CS. Put a Q in his face, and he walks straight into it. It's those little things that uh, middle laner's so good at. QTV double popping the potions. Uh, he's going to be right back to full HP. Yeah, we're looking at level nine spike for Maple if he keeps uh, control of this matchup. If this is perfect CS, he is trailing by one, right? So there's four more CS in there, so they're equal. Now he's one CS. Ahead on the side of Maple, he could be falling behind. Yeah, he did miss the melee. And it actually doesn't matter if they're if they're equal or not. It matters who kills the last wave first, right? Even if you would equal out the next wave. And Kiki um, is actually quite a bit behind that experience. I mean, he still didn't get eight off of that wave. So, uh, you know, we have Maple has been eight for, for a couple minions here. Mm -hmm. The problem is QTV is never getting the push. So he needs to technically be ahead five minions for this playstyle to scale. So I think what we're going to see is on the next wave that meets us, not a cannon wave, QDV might be prepping for an all-in. Yeah, I think he's going to have to because he's been giving Right up. here. This might be it on this shield here. Oh, it's kind of tough now. Maple is, is just reading like a book. He backs off any time he comes close. And Maple is playing it out very intelligently, not really giving QTV the opportunity to get in range. I think the, the correct play for QDV is to fake the all-in, forcing Maple to spam these Qs on max range and managate him. Put him low enough that he can't actually win the fight anymore. But with the lost chapter, with double Dorans and the Fairy Charm, does he does he actually own? Yeah, he has to go for another base because he can't actually commit to a fight anymore. So it's a smart base by Maple. It's forced from QTV not going for the actual all-in, but the threat of the all-in is enough. The way full resets as well because Maple was pushing, there's 15 creeps remaining. What do you think about Sword Boots here? Because, I mean, there already is some flat MR from the from the null, so... I think the the, the fact that he, like, like he has to face a Hexranker makes it good. And the fact that he actually... Mobility is a big component here. Wants like, to dodge out the ease. Dodge out the ease and just get back in the lane quicker. Yeah. This is just a push. Like, right now, because of Boots 2, he's here already. He would probably arrive, like, a few seconds later. He's setting up for 9 more CS. Just like you said as well, dodging the ease. I think Maple set up for victory here. Yeah, I mean, QTV has missed two Oh, that's, this is he it. Has he has to go. He's going all in right now. All right, connects E. Misses. No, he gets it. He didn't ult. He didn't ult. He needed to ult there. Uh, he could zone, though. He could go for zone play. Maple's low. Maple has to walk back in. The next E from Maple is crucial. Oh, good connection there. Side steps from QTV. QTV is no boots right here, so he could have probably went for more movement speed here. Juking out the Q for one. This is good. He can walk up. Also bought a second Fairy Charm instead of Health Bots. Yeah. And now he's quite low, so I think that was a, was a bit of a silly decision here, but... Uh, I think QTV should have forced it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he was in range for the ultimate. It's, it's now one wave away from this being game over. And he's, he's basically pushing the wave. Maple can let the wave go under turret because QDV can no longer swap under turret because, yeah, he'll be tanking the bloody turret, so... Uh, I think Maple has this. There's there's a lot of minions. Yeah, he's safety under turret. Remember, there is still a Hex Drinker. Yeah, there's four minions. That, that's all the minions he needs. Oh, once he has, going under turret, but it's so much damage! Oh, so close! QTV needed to all yeah. in earlier. We had, had the chance. With that trade in mind, seeing how it ended in the uh, final exchange, QTV should have just popped that ulti earlier. Yeah, I mean, 
he used both the summoner cells Maple did, right? And he got two tower shots from his tower onto QGV, and he still almost lost. One Q. It was... It was so